Hey everyone, Tankenstein here with your top 5 tips and tricks for using boosters effectively in War Thunder. In this video I'll be delivering the best ways to not only use boosters in War Thunder, but also to make sure that Gaijin does not take advantage of you by having you fall into one of their traps that they like to set with boosters whether it's through needlessly purchasing them or by them being inefficient in certain situations that Gaijin likes to put you in. Either way, as always, subscriptions are incredibly appreciated as they make my channel grow from the size of a Panzer I all the way to a King Tiger in just a few years. But with that said, let's get into the video. For tip number one, when using a Silver Lion booster, almost exclusively use them with premium vehicles, at least if you have the opportunity. This is because they already have an enhanced Silver Lion boost, of which is multiplied by boosters. It only doubles the base value when not considering if you have a premium account, so it is not a complete stack, but it still gives you a much greater boost than if you just place it on a regular vehicle without the premium vehicle SL boost. Further, make sure that you find a good premium vehicle to boost, of which will have a high base silver line modifier. I personally prefer the A5C in this role, as it has a very high silver line modifier. Plus, it performs very well in matches, being that it can shoot down both planes and bomb bases fairly well. A plane like the F-84F, the Israeli version, however, has fairly low silver line modifiers and should be avoided. I personally also prefer to use larger SL boosters in Air RB, being that rewards tend to be far greater than ground RB, plus you're using a premium vehicle for 100% of the match, being that there are no respawns. In ground battles or in air AB, you have numerous respawns, making it so that there's a good chance that you will not always be in the higher SL modifier premium vehicle that you prefer, at least for the entire match. Of course, Air RB has the risk of you dying early in a match, and then it's all over, but if you do well, the rewards are, in my opinion, more than worth it. For tip number two, this one might seem obvious, so I'll make it somewhat quick. Don't stack boosters unless you need to. I can tell you from experience that when unlocking boosters, whether it's through chests, battle pass, or whatever, sometimes you have a ton of boosters to use all at once. If possible, do not use them all at the same time, as you will quickly see diminishing returns on how effective they are. If you use 10% boosters of any kind, so it doesn't matter if it's RP or SL, your first booster will give you the full 10%. Then the second booster will only give you 6% on top of that. A further booster will give you even less until each consecutive 10% booster only gives you 2% boost. This scales up to larger boosters as well, so you'll be at a major loss if you use them simultaneously. If there are purchasable chests or battle pass rewards that contain boosters, my advice is to unlock and use them all gradually. So meaning that you should unlock and use them only if your previous booster of that type, so again RP or SL, has been totally consumed. Stacking two boosters at a time is not a terrible way to use them, though it is far from ideal, as you will still receive far fewer rewards than if you just use them individually. Interestingly, the diminishing returns by stacking personal boosters does not negatively impact the usage of the boosters that give all allies 10% or more depending on if you purchase it or not, RP or SL. For tip number three, use RP boosters on non-premium vehicles unless you're trying to grind the tech tree alone and do not care about unlocking mods. This tip is a bit more of a user's preference tip, but it helps to understand how each choice can benefit you, whether or not you're going to use it on non-premium vehicles or premium vehicles. If you use RP boosters exclusively on non-premium vehicles, you will then be able to unlock the modifications for that vehicle, of which will give you a very large RP boost when you complete a row of modifications. This RP boost is oftentimes worth unlocking all of the mods, and which will obviously come quicker if you're using a booster to unlock them more quickly. For example, if at the end of a row of modifications it gives you an extra 10,000 RP towards a vehicle unlock, and you're using a few vehicles per match, of which will give you a full row of modifications maybe every few matches, you'll end up getting tons of RP from doing that alone, which will oftentimes trump using RP on a premium vehicle that will not benefit you from having a full row of modifications unlocked. Being that you cannot unlock any mods on premium vehicles, being that, of course, premium vehicles come with fully unlocked mods. But if you're looking to grind out the tech tree as quickly as possible, at least through the first two tiers or so, you may want to look at using RP boosters in matches in which you use premium vehicles, at least if you don't care about unlocking mods for the vehicles that you unlocked. This is more of a no-nonsense approach and works better for grinding out lower BR vehicles, 
being that those vehicles give you substantially lower RP when unlocking a full row of modifications. So it may just be more beneficial to use RP boosters on premium vehicles when just trying to grind through the majority of a tech tree, at least give or take below 5.0 BR. Number four, don't buy item shop boosters, not unless you're flush with cash. If you have the option, just purchase a premium account. Premium accounts offer 100% RP and 50% SL bonuses on every vehicle that you use. And for a set time limit of one full day, meaning that you could play 50 matches and still receive RP and SL bonuses from having premium account. Of course, I'm just using one full day of premium time as an example in this case, but I'll go over why in just a second. A single day of premium time is 190 Golden Eagles, whereas you can purchase two 15% boosters from the item shop, one for SL and RP each, both of which will only last a maximum of 10 matches or up to 24 hours after using them, whichever comes first. And those boosters will cost you 198 Golden Eagles together. So for a simple 15% boost for RP and SL, and for only 10 matches, it will cost you 198 Golden Eagles, whereas a 100 RP and 50% SL boost for unlimited matches over a 24 hour period will cost you 190 Golden Eagles, with the cost diminishing per unit of premium time as you purchase larger amounts of premium time. Even if you have already purchased premium time, these boosters are largely not worth it, as you will earn them for free by logging in and also completing fairly common events that War Thunder runs. In short, purchasing the item shop boosters is the least effective way to earn RP and SL in game, outside of using convertible experience to quickly research vehicles and directly buying Silver Lions with Golden Eagles. Conversely, using War Bonds to buy RP boosters that come with every new level of the War Bond shop is one of the best ways to unlock boosters, as they can be up to a total of 500% RP for only 10 War Bonds. And finally, for tip number 5, I'll end on a short and fairly obvious one. Only use boosters when you know that you have the time to fully utilize them. If you have a 10% 20 battle booster, it is forgivable if you don't complete it within 24 hours of using it, but you better make sure that you have the time to sit down and play if you have any 15% boosters or better, especially those at 20% or higher boost that run for 10 or more matches. While a 10% booster is certainly nice and will of course help with the grind, the per match bonus is small enough where you may not notice a big difference between matches, especially if you're doing poorly. For me, the threshold for where I definitely feel like I need to complete my boosters fully is 20% and 10 matches. If I have a higher percentage or a higher number of matches, again starting with that 20% booster, I make sure to take the time to play, as doing this with these larger boosters can actually shave off several matches from having to grind for a new vehicle, which is awesome. You could also equate this into terms of pure time, which could save you actually several hours of gameplay to unlock a newer vehicle, especially when it comes to a higher tier vehicle. And now for my sixth tip, the best way to boost my channel is with subscriptions. But seriously, thanks for watching everyone. Please like this video if you liked it or found it useful. Comment with your own tips and tricks to share with the community to help them. And subscribe if you're a Radley Dudenstein. Either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.